Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Hey, today we're going to get back on the YJ2. I've got some seals in for the forks. So we're going to clean those up, uh, disassemble them, put them back together, see if we can get the gaiters to fit, uh, the fork boots, and uh, get it back on the bike and see about uh, what our new fender and the whole thing looks like uh, kind of put back together. Uh, we certainly won't be done with it, but hopefully we'll be pretty much done with the front end of it. So let's get down there and get started. Okay, let's uh, work on getting a fork off this thing, I guess. Work in the tire. Yeah, looks like I got absolutely the wrong one there. I need to actually get over here and get this cable disconnected first though. Actually I had the right one, it just had so much dirt on it. I think it should just come out. No, no pinch bolt or anything on that one. Yeah, look, the axles on both ends were greased up pretty good, so I didn't have any issues there. Yeah, it looks like rust, just like the other ones. And probably need to have the bearings packed on it. Brake shoes look okay. So it's just, uh, just needing some cleaning up and a new tire. Okay, on these we don't have an upper pinch bolt. So before you loosen the, uh, the bottom one, you've got to get these loose so you can get them out. And everything's going to slide down, or can slide down, <laughs> it may not do it, uh, when, we disc when we loosen the bottom ones. But before we do that, I want to get the headlight bucket off, or at least loose. I don't really want to take all the wiring out, just so I can get, I can kind of leave all that intact for not really wanting to do all that right now. Okay, so that's loose. This stuff's all loose. So in theory, once you loosen the pinch bolts here, the tubes will just drop out and you'll have this here. They won't just do that. Uh, and when you put them back in, I've got a tool that I made that comes down here to screw screw into where the the bolts came out of, so that you can hold that up while you get this pinch bolt tightened. Otherwise, you will just fight this thing. I've done it, so just uh, be aware of that if you're doing one of these bikes. Seemed like it kind of started, but doesn't want to keep going. This one did come down a little more. Okay, so I just spread the, the lower triple right there. Oh, it had a lot of rust in it. See, this is probably, well, at least that one looks like it's in pretty good shape down in, at least in the work area. So you really can't complain about that. I hear oil down there, so we want to put this bolt back in here if we lay them down or anything so that it doesn't uh, run out until we're ready anyway. And I'll just, uh, see this just comes off like that. And then I'll go ahead and expand this one over here, same way. And it'll just come right out then. And the same thing with this one. Yeah, 
Yay. Looks like all the work area is good. We, we should be able to clean some of this up up here. Uh, there's some rust there, but the majority of that is uh, baked on grease. Well, that's a lot of rust right there. There's a lot of grease in there too, so that might clean up not too shabby. We'll see. Okay, this is what I was thinking of here. Get this up there. And there's, uh, I think the rubber part comes out of the other one, but I believe that will just fit right in there. And that way we can leave the lower tubes, uh, we can leave these off and we can put the gaiters on there. It, it'll make it a little more streamlined, a little more clean looking, I think, uh, with that and the fender. Okay, the springs are pretty filthy, so I'm going to clean them up and then the upper part up here is going to need to be de-rusted, so I'll get those into the de-rusting solution. Same on these uh, upper fork tubes. I can't pull the, uh, the seals or the dust covers down until I get rid of this, otherwise it'll just tear up. You know, it's not a big deal with the old ones. We will be reusing these old dust covers. But, uh, you know, to pull or to push new, new seals over this would just be uh, idiotic. You know, you tear, tear the new ones up. So we've got to get rid of this rust. And a lot of it looks like we just need to clean in uh, probably some paint thinner first. And then we'll get that in the de-ruster and then probably uh, lightly sand it with some, uh, oh, I don't know, thousand grit or something like that just to get it down so it doesn't destroy the seals. Yep, we got a little slug of Delrin. Uh, it's probably the closest that I've got. So I'll just, uh, I'll be able to turn, I'll probably just turn a couple of these down. This one here is probably brittle. That's probably what happened to the other one. So we'll be, uh, be making some upper spring supports. Okay, these are turning out pretty good. I, uh, I just took steel wool, this is uh, 4 aught, and just cleaned it up the best I could. And once I've done that, I know what's left is rust. So I've got some 1200. So this should get her down pretty good. And it's not a big deal if you got a little rust up here on the top. But you just don't want to use anything really aggressive. And I've got this in my brat or copper jaws too, so I'm not tearing anything up. Got a little bit of where the clamp was right there. But see, most of that just comes off with uh, steel wool. Use the less aggressive means as possible. But you just you've got to get it clean enough where it's not going to eat up your seal just as you put it on. I'll go ahead and put it in some uh, metal rescue. And I'll probably end up doing this again. But it actually feels quite a bit better already. But the whole working area of the fork is clean so we don't have to worry about it taking out our seals again we'll be once we get it apart then we'll check the tubes and make sure they're straight if you recall when i did the at90 uh, it had been those forks were bent the worst that i've ever seen and still be able to straighten them and i think we were able to get them within five thousandths and that's that's a that's pretty darn good of course, you know, I'm sure there's some safety concern when you've got bad ones like that, but these bikes, you know, we're just tooling around town or something like that with them, so it's not, not a huge thing. But we'll get that cleaned up, I'll get all this stuff soaking, and uh, then we'll go over and, and check to see if the uh, tubes are bent or not. And I'm just going to get rid of enough of this grime so that I can get the fork apart.
See, these are clean enough now that the this comes off there pretty easily. This is pretty soft. I really thought it was going to be pretty caked on, but it's not. So let's see if we can get that nut off. Sometimes those will just come right off, but other times you need a Let's see, I think I gotta go the other way. Use a strap wrench on them. And sometimes they don't like that either. Yep, I'm gonna have to get some rubber under it or something. Let's see what I can find. Okay, I'm just, uh, found a piece of rubber here. And I'm just gonna try to not cut it, but we'll see if, it, if it'll work that way. There, there it comes. Sometimes you gotta get something on there. You sure don't wanna use pliers on it, guys. Please don't do that. These are nice chromed nuts. Let's see, it's okay taking these off that way, but you sure wouldn't wanna put a new seal in there and do that. So we'll make, make sure we get all that cleaned up. I had most of it drained out, but there's still some left. Still got a little too much up there for the slider to go through. So I've got to clean that up yet. So we'll just try to clean up up here. That's where the hang up was for the slider. This 1200 grit, it's really small. Oh, there we go, just enough. Okay, I got it set up here in my blocks. And this one, at least, it's uh, looking pretty good. I'm getting about eight thousandths, not bad. I normally would accept that. We'll see what the other one is. If we uh, need to do anything to it, maybe we'll try to work on this one a little too. I, I like to have them within five if I can, but uh, sometimes it's better to just leave well enough alone. Within 10 is acceptable in my opinion. Okay, here's the other one, and it's even better. It's like we got about two, two or three Got a lot of work to do these, so we'll see if I want to mess with that other one. Uh, I probably will. I'll probably try to mess with that to get it a little bit better, get it closer to this one. Okay, something on the on these forks that's missing, that's on most of them, is a a uh, groove right somewhere in this nut, and. Since we don't have one, there's nothing to hold the bottom end of the boot. See, these have a little lip on them that has got to go down. And of course, these are a little bit big too. Not bad, but see, there's just not, a, you couldn't even go underneath that. It's really hard to find anything any smaller. So what we've got to do is adapt that and here's, uh, here's the wiper that goes on. And what I did was I went over to the lathe and I took a piece of uh, uh, Delrin and I grooved it out here so it would fit 
it's come down below the top and then this is grooved just to hold the spring spring cup and see this is how it originally went on it actually uses this little bit of recess here to hold the spring in place now what I've got is just a little bit of uh, a recess here and I've got to make a washer that'll fit in there that's my next thing so because if I put this on like this and you get you hit something really hard you're probably gonna break this so I'm just gonna fill up the gap here about 30 thousandths uh, with an aluminum washer that just will go right on top of this and this of course just comes down here and fits like this then your spring goes on and that holds that down but it also gives me something for this lip to hook on now it's pretty tight because I've got to stretch it to get it on there but it will go and like I say this will just uh, I don't know whether I can actually get it on there. I probably don't want to until I'm, I'll wait until I'm done so I won't have to do it once. <clears throat> I've actually had it on there once. But anyway, that gives us something to uh, fasten it to at the bottom and the spring pressure will keep that down. Now what we also need to do is this right here is the upper one that goes in there and that will fit into here and also do the same thing so so it'll be secure on both ends these are the original ones I did find the other one it was stuck up in the tube but I don't need the flat so I don't think anyway I could I think I could use these actually by themselves but I really don't think I need that flat see these will fit up here into into this area and with a zip tie you can secure it too uh, I'm not sure I don't think I need the flat but if I may I may with the triple tree I'm gonna have to look at it again but if I can eliminate the flat part then I'll uh, I'll just go and uh, make one full circle and stick in there I've got to look and see why that flat parts there I just kind of got to thinking about it but anyhow that is going to give us something to uh, to hook our gator to and that's going to be a nice uh, a nice uh, clean install then Yeah, I think that has to do with this, with this cutout here. So I believe we're going to be able to use uh, a full circle one. This would work, but it will, uh, when you tighten it up, I'm afraid that it will kind of be off when you get a zip tie on it. I think it'll be off a little bit. See how it kind of flattens out on this side. We need to try to keep that cylindrical if we can. Okay, there's our our inside. Just about through, there it is. So then we've we put our little dust shield down and then our washer and then our 
our new piece and then our spring. And it looks like we can go ahead and make this a, a full round just like we want. So uh, that should work good. So there's our fully round piece. Okay, need to get these seals out. So you just need a kind of a little receiver here and some stuff to push it out with. You need whatever you're pushing it out backwards with, you need it to fit as close as possible. And I just got a few other things that I stick in there to, to make up the room. There we go. There's my seal right there. And I just usually put a little nut or a little oil inside the nut, especially on this taper up here. And get our new seal. Actually a little oil on that too will will help especially if they've got this steel band the rubberized ones are not as bad and just get it as now well, as close to starting as possible may be easier said than done. Okay, I think I've kind of got it straight here. That's not wanting to. There, I think. I think we're getting it. So we're in. Okay, I think we're square on it here. All right, it's down. Okay, one thing on these is is the the two lower tubes are different. Uh, 
not just in the regular way, but as a completely different way. The, uh, if you look down, and I don't think you'll be able to see it. But if you can, down the bottom there, there's no uh, dampening rod sticking up. It's flat. Okay, so that's the right one. And the other one, the left one, it's got a kind of a dampening rod there in the bottom sticking up, a little pointed thing. Okay, so the left one with the pointy thing gets this tube and it goes down onto it. And then the one that doesn't have anything in the bottom gets this tube and it comes straight flat down onto the bottom of the, of the uh, female tube there. So we'll build this right one first and it's actually got the, uh, the lug on it for the brake and use different amounts of oil also. The right one gets uh, 150 to 160 cc's and the left gets 120 to 130 cc's. So you need to pay attention to that. So let's see, we're doing the, the right one. So we need 150 to 160 and it says 30 weight. I'm going to use 20 weight fork oil. It says 20 or 30 weight uh, motor oil. So I'm going to go with the fork oil at 20 weight. So I'll go ahead and measure that out. So we need to get our slider in there. And then our, our nut with the seal in it. And we'll get a little oil on that new seal. And we'll put a little up here too. And you've got, you've got this sharp edge right here. So we'll put a little here on that, but I'm going to clean that up right there at the top and put a little plastic bag over that. And now we're going to try to work our seal over that, just like that. And that protects it while we're getting that down where it needs to be. These all are a little bit different. You just have to kind of play it by ear and, and uh, make sure they go back in the way they're supposed to. Now, We've got our, our dust shield and the little spacer that I made. That's going to go in there and that spacer goes in there to, uh, so that the, uh, the bottom piece that I made, uh, it, this was recessed a little bit. Now it's a little bit proud. So I'm hoping that, uh, there's enough there for it to compress onto this, uh, right here a little bit. And this will go over like that. So this is what I made in order for the uh, rubber boots to fit. And I've already got one. I've got this one loaded already. I've got the, this piece in it. And I've got the spring in it. And I've got the top piece. The top is this right here that fits in the top of the... the uh, the boot. Okay, before I do that, I need to tighten that up just a little bit though. Let's see, where are we at here? I think it's going to be this way. I 
Now, I'm going to put my little piece of rubber back on it. It doesn't need to be real tight. It just needs to be snugged up. Okay, that should be good. All right, so we've got the, um, let's see, I gotta get that dust shield and the washer I made just to make up that little bit of room. And I've already got the, uh, the spring and the lower piece that I made and the upper piece. And then you've got a little rubber seal that goes right in the top. Okay, right there. And it's a little bit big on this one. It's just real hard to find anything that'll fit. But what I'm going to do right here in the back is just kind of pull it up a little bit and then try to get this uh, onto it. Just like that. This piece in first. Yeah. And the one that goes in the top. And you've just got to get it to fit in uh, the top bellow right here. Okay. So I've got that in there. Then I get the spring in and it goes like this. So the loose, the looser ones to the top. And that will go onto the, the centering part of the upper piece. And then, then I get this piece in. And it takes the, uh, the smaller, the, the uh, spring pocket portion goes up there first. Okay, then all this just slides down on it and it sits, sits where it's supposed to. And you've got just enough here that you can get your uh, zip tie on the bottom to hold it in. I tell you, I went through, I don't know how many, and just could not find one that had this, the right size here and the right size here. This was the closest I could come up with. Not to say that you, there isn't one, but I couldn't find it. Okay guys, let's see if we can get this uh, front end put back together. We've got to pull our nut out of the, off of the top here and also pull the, the uh, headlight ear out. And this is the right side here, so it's gonna Let's see, we got Okay. You can see here, I had to pull that chrome piece out. It's going to be up here. And then, of course, this, you know, this stuff has got to get painted. But for right now, just to see how things are looking, this is what we're going to do. Now, this is how you have to pull this up. And then tighten up your pinch bolt in order to, uh, let's see, that's 14, I think. Yeah. In order to uh, be able to capture it, if you, if you don't, you're gonna be fighting trying to get this, trying to get that uh, up so you can get the bolt in it. So we've, you just grab hold of your T-handle and you pull that up to the top. 
and then you tighten your pinch bolt. I'm actually going to have to get up here and get a little There. Okay. And tighten that pinch bolt up. I think you can see here, right here is where that nut and bolt are going to go. And you're going to, if you're doing these, there's no substitute for making yourself one of these. I believe it's a 12 millimeter, whatever this bolt is, I believe it's 12. Okay, so that one's in. Let me get the other one in. All right, get this other side started. Get your grommet on there. And this uh, kind of tapered area here goes to the top. Okay. So again, get ready to tighten our pinch bolt. Okay. There's no other way to do it, guys. You gotta have this. Okay, get this headlight back up here and kind of get it out of your way there. Okay. Now I'll be able to tighten these up up here. We, we'll we'll uh, loosen the pinch bolt, tighten the top, and then re -loose, or re-tighten the pinch bolt. All right, get her new sportier fender on. Okay, let's see if we can get the front wheel on. And I uh, cleaned these bearings and repacked them also. Had one guy getting a little upset with me for thinking I'm overly cheap for, uh, I'm gonna have to lift that up, for not replacing the bearings. But I look at it this way. I've been packing wheel bearings on cars for 60 years and uh, you know, that's just what you do. You don't replace them. I realize they're, they're, most of those are a, temp, a Tempkin type tapered bearing, but it's no different. If the wheel, if the, if the, if the uh, bearing is not bad, you can turn it, it doesn't sound bad, it turns smooth, clean it, re-lube it, pack it, put it back in there. It's, it's not that big a deal. It, uh, it saves you some money. And uh, most of these bikes have got 3,000 miles on them. So and if they haven't been in water, they're okay. Okay, let's see if we can get that in now.
I'll leave the the speedometer disconnected at this point because I've still got to clean it a little bit and mess with it. But I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. I think it's better. Okay, I uh, went ahead and put the metal rescue in the tank and it really turned out nice. Really hard to see down in there but it really cleaned up good and there was only one leak. And it was right here. Somebody put too long of screw in there and screwed it in and it, it broke out into the inside. So I had to, uh, what I did was I, I took a screwdriver and, and pushed, kind of pried the uh, piece that was sticking out of it back in so that it was at least closed up. And then I put uh, some gas tank uh, epoxy inside the hole. Uh, there's, a, there's a dimple for each one of these. And of course, where the screw went all the way through, it, um, it was even a bigger dimple. So anyhow, I think I've got it fixed. It, I let that set a couple of days and I actually put a little bit on the inside too. I don't know that you can see it or not, but that's, that's the one right there that I'm kind of pointing at. So we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. But I had to take everything apart, had to take the knee pads off. This side just really turned out nice. Uh, at least this piece did and this. This knee pad needs to be replaced over here, but trying to find those is uh, pretty difficult. And this emblem here was broken. So what I did was I filled it, I taped it back in the side and filled it full of uh, clear epoxy. And now I've got to uh, re-drill it and uh, get the hole back in there so I can put it back on. But it looks 100% better with just the uh, epoxy in there. That chip out of there was really, uh, was really bad. So anyhow, uh, these are hard to find too. So we're doing what we can with what we've got. Okay, I, I said that I was having some issues with the horn and what it was, there's, there's a coil in there and I'd seen somebody had been messing with the adjustment on the point set. And once I, I'd taken it all apart and cleaned everything, but once I moved this to uh, open those points up a little bit, I'm good. Uh, still got a little problem with the uh, with the uh, switch, but I'm just hitting the battery here and everything's working okay. Uh, maybe could be a little louder. I'm not sure I can get it to do that, but I'll play with it a little yet. Okay. These horns can usually be fixed, you know, if they're not uh, tore up inside or just completely rusted shut. You can take the face off the little uh, buzzer here in the middle and just keep playing with it. And nine times out of ten, you can get them going. They may not be super loud, but, but they're still original 
and they do make some noise. Okay, another thing we need to do is on the petcock, the original filter screen was, of course, rusted away. And I've actually got some material I use, I got off of eBay that I can kind of form on here and, uh, you know, solder it on there. At least get that so it'll keep the, the big particles out of it. But I'll be going through that and uh, everything is good with the tank, as good as we can get it. Um, but I think... I just think that that looks a lot better with the uh, with the new fender and the gaiters, the the fork boots. They're a little bit long, so they they kind of kind of bind up a little bit. But I I think maybe they'll come out of it with a little time. This one's a little better. That one there just needs to... I think maybe it's it's hooked underneath a spring coil or something. So maybe as we use it, it'll kind of come out. But I think the fender looks so much better. And uh, it's, just, it's just almost a different bike. Got a lot of stuff to do. Uh, you know, all this will get painted. This, uh, if you saw it the first time, it was kind of nasty. These pieces here, I'm gonna have, a, I'm gonna kind of keep an eye out for these. If I can't do any, if I can't find some reasonably priced better than these, I may just go ahead and strip these and nickel plate them because I can do that. Won't be that shiny, but it'll be about like the fender. I think the fender is nickel. You know, it's not perfect, but uh, when I saw it on uh, eBay, this one actually came from Thailand, and it's a it's a handmade one, and I think it's pretty good craftsmanship myself. Uh, not chrome, but you know, high polished nickel, and I think be able to shine that up a little bit more. But these will be painted blue, and of course, everything else will be painted blue. The black parts painted blue. You know, I just, I originally thought maybe I could do like the uh, YL2C and just, uh, you know, buff all this out. But when I paint these, they're going to be so bright, it's going to look, it's going to look weird. So I think it's just best to go ahead and strip the whole thing and repaint it. I wish the tank was a little better, but it, it's not too bad. And maybe one of these days I can find somebody that'll re-chrome it for me. But I think it's looking pretty good. And I was able to get a complete seat. And that also came from Thailand. And it's, it's the base, the foam, the seat cover, everything. And it was very reasonable. I want to say it was uh, $65, but about that much to get it here too. So by the time you, you pay uh, $35, $40 for a cover and then go to all the trouble to, uh, to repair the foam and get it on there and all that, I think it's money well spent. And the, the Yamaha thing is a little crooked on the back, but not bad. So we've got our tail light on. Oh, I did find a YL1 uh, chain guard. And I think this will bolt right on here and up here. But I've just got it set in there, setting in there right now. I've got to pull the exhaust pipe off to get to it. But, you know, I'm sh I know that these had the full guard on them. But, you know, most people took those off and threw them away. And I, th I think this is a kind of goes more along the lines of what we're trying to do with the fender and uh, the fork boots and it makes it just a little bit sportier.
everything assembled uh, except for the speedometer on there. But we're going to need a lot of work yet on the handlebar switches and, uh, you know, just pretty much everything. Just a lot of cleaning up. Done a lot of that already. But, uh, you know, that's what makes them look nice, even if they're kind of rough, is uh, being clean and new hardware and all the parts on there. Okay guys, there you got it. Uh, I think it looks a lot sportier. Uh, of course I'm keeping all the parts and uh, the really it's just, just these and the front fender. Uh, I, I believe. So I can put it back to original if I want to, but I owned one of these as original back in the day and I didn't really care for it then. I didn't like the look. I liked the sportier look of say the YL1 that had the chrome fender and you know, just not as uh, old looking, you know what I mean? But anyhow, uh, I'm keeping all that and probably when I paint it, I'll go ahead and, and do the body work on it and paint it also. Just, just to have it, but you know, a lot of times when you do something like that, that stuff is laying up somewhere and it falls down or it gets scratched or what, you know, so it's almost like a lot of work that is going to waste. But I'll see what I can do on that. Right now I'm happy with how things are looking here. These are actually not the uh, boots that I was originally going to put on this. I still have those and I may eventually use them. Uh, these are closer to the size of the tube top and bottom. I got these off of Amazon. It took quite a while to find them. And it's real hard, like I said in the video, to find these things that are the right size down here and the right size up here. Uh, you know, most, most fork boots for present day bikes, you know, the forks have gotten just huge. And when you're talking uh, 26 millimeter, that's pretty small. Even, even the Enduros back in the day, the AT1, CT1 had 30 millimeter. So <clears throat> I, at one point, I, it, I even thought about putting a set of those forks on it. But I think it would be, uh, I think it would look out of place. I really do. Uh, I'd, you'd have to use the upper, or the triple tree too, which it may just go right on there. I'm not real sure. I, I, didn't, I didn't pursue it anymore. I just thought, well, this is the way to, to clean it up and to, to give it a little bit newer look. So I just went ahead with that. But that's an option if you've got, uh, if you got a set of enduro forks laying around, it might it might be a nice thing. I'm sure it'll, they're longer, so it's going to look a little jacked up. But anyhow, uh, I'm looking I'm liking the looks of this. I was kind of kind of mad about the gas tank. Uh, somebody put a longer screw in there, and they just kept screwing it in until they ran it through the side of the gas tank. I used some of the Caswell epoxy gas tank sealer on the outside in the screw hole and uh, they have a dimple so you can act, what I tried to do was just fill the dimple full of the sealer and then on the inside I pushed the the piece that was uh, pushed open or pushed into the tank it was still intact it just was pushed open and I, I pri pried it back as close to it as I could and then put a little bit of that sealer on the inside also. So only time will tell whether or not that's gonna work. But uh, as soon as I put the uh, metal rescue in it and it started leaking out, so I knew I had a problem. But I had to take all that off and you know, it was kind of a chore. But anyhow, we've got uh, carburation to go through. We've got timing to go through. We've got the uh, speedometer yet to do. 
So we've got, we've got at least one more video, maybe two on this before we uh, go out and test ride it and then bring it in and fix whatever we think might need fixing. And then uh, later on this summer, we'll try to get it tore down and uh, get it painted. And then, you know, maybe in the fall, you know, stick it all back together. Hey, thanks for going along on the ride. See you next video.